<laughs> so this game has multiplayer, right? It does. Um, uh, you need Java to run the server, though. <laughs> I'm not going to be the one to run the server, Java boy. Um, <laughs> I'm Java. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I've been Stone here at LGC Actual, joined every week with a man up north with his stealth fireplace. That is one Jordan's fine. So and sneaky. Snack. That fire you, it's looking kind of sus, man. That's all I'm saying. But you won't be able to tell if it's on fire. People down there, you can see him all the way to my over that my right. That's Pedro Mateus staying up late, doing his thing. <laughs> Look at it. It's kind of brilliant. To go with you at home, shot realm dynamic, join us live, helping us form cocaine, Voltron. Beautiful people. We got two Two canes. Uh, both canes, man. I need somebody that can art. If you can art, like get in touch with me. And I'll be like, hey, this is, I got this idea. And you're like, what's wrong with you? And we'll probably never talk again. You, you, um, you, you know about the rapper Two Chains. We're, just, we're Two Canes. <laughs> two Canes, baby. A lot, a lot to get into. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it right after we do that quick recap. But what's going on in our live to organs? Uh, I, I brought it up in the pre pre show. Um, Zest, the soap company. Get fucked with your soap design. Okay. I. <laughs> The Old man yells at buy, soap bar tonight dude, at LGC. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Google that weird ass soap bar. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm going to use it out of spite. But then I then it, w- it was not for all. I found out. Jordan found out that they have race car soap. So I'm going to buy some zest race car soap. To have yeah, upstairs. <laughs> the nice soap. I'll break that out for people. Yeah, but, it's, for, um, it's for the guests. Outside of that, I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. Audio stuff, uh, the Magewell, I'm working on getting that review together. I found, I found a very unique challenge because I wanted to show everyone who had happened to pick up one of these how to tame that fan and, you know, get it to where you can hear it from the other side of the house. But I found myself thinking, okay, I need to make this bulletproof so there's no way anyone's going to set anything on fire and I'm going to end up like, Hello, Mr. Stone. Here's your subpoena. Uh, I'm like, ah. <laughs> like, I learned it by watching him. So I think I found a way to do it. I'll have, I think all the parts are going to be here Monday for that. Basically, we're just going to be taking, you know, like a 1.25 JST micro connector and converting that out into a two pin Molex to go right into a motherboard. Nothing fancy, but I, I just want to throw that extra bit of engineering into the video. How about you? And Jordan, what's new? You've been doing the squats. I've I've weighted lunges, body weight lunges, weighted lunges with occlusion bands, just destroying my quads. I'm yes. tired of being out of shape, so I'm starting to work out again. I have enough weights to start doing some stuff, make it hard. So I did quad death, and now I have trouble taking the stairs today. And my play, my new house is like fucking six flights of stairs to go anywhere. It's great. Oh man. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, I, got, I got vaccinated this week, too. I'm a fatty, fatty, McFat fat. And so having high BMI, I qualified you for uh, accelerated uh, vaccine scheduling. And so mm. I got my Moderna shot part one. They did it real fast. Weeks. Yeah, well, the I'm, I was waiting there for like 40 minutes. And then the doctor is just like, do you have any questions? I'm like, yes. When are you going to stick me? And she's like, right now. Excellent. Do I get a lollipop? <laughs> right. I was mad. I, I, I'm like, I, I, listen, that was the only reason I fucking came here is I wanted a lollipop for getting stuck with the needle. He oh, was like, not, not no. even a balloon. I, th- this is this is why you should. No, no. Get vaccinated, people. Get vaccinated, please. Pedro Mateus. Yeah, no, not much happening around here this week and the next week are going to be a uh, shit because work has, uh, well, uh, let's just say our VoIP solution used to be hosted by Skype for Business, but Microsoft's saying we're not supporting that shit anymore, so... Teams! Yeah, everyone's got to move to teams now, so there's about 3,000 people in the organization. Guess who's going to have to fucking do it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's not you, just you me. Thought, there's <laughs> more people. You thought, yeah. you thought you could escape <laughs> Skype, Pedro. You were wrong. Yeah. It's back forever. Forever. <laughs> forever. Uh, man, forever. I, I was like looking around like, hey, did Pedro retweet that the show's on? Like, no, no, I did not. No. I completely forgot about yeah, that. that- <laughs> 
Damn it. All right. So, uh, b- b- fill some air real quick while I make a little tweet and be like, hey, we're live. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, we've been on Skype for business for years now. Uh, it was already. You, in for, place. you poor bastards. Have you, like, <laughs> I, I, I remember not being exposed to Skype for business and then realizing, like, in 20, it was like 2017 or something, like, oh my God, this is MSN Messenger. This is, it is. the same fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it, it uses a completely different uh, protocol to regular Skype to just to make things extra difficult. So, why would Microsoft yeah. want to make things easy for you? That's like, it's not like it's their entire business. No, model here's the beautiful anything. thing about Microsoft somebody there genuinely thinks this is a better solution. They're like, no, this is the future. <laughs> we had we had to kill we had to kill Skype so that Skype for Business Emerson Messenger could live. They got it yeah. wrong. Fly, little butterfly. They got it Fly. wrong. We're saving you all, you fucking monkeys. It was Skype net. You were all going to burn. It was Skype uh, all along. I'm like, I couldn't wait to kill Link EXE faster. Honestly, <laughs> I, I I wonder though uh, how, if I wanted to make a phone call to the horse, how would I go about doing that? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Tell me about it. I gotta stick my ear into some hole and scream, it's the Steam Linux Update. So, you know, you might you might have uh, gotten yourself a bit of a collection of Steam games, what with all the sales and humble bundles and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, but you, you <laughs> punk, man, I got like eight hundred. <laughs> exactly. You scrub. But, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm just. Uh, I got my little itty bitty e penis. I only have like 600 Steam games or something. How do you, no, no but, I don't believe that for a second. There's no way you have uh, less Steam games than me. You buy a lot more bundles than I do. I do not redeem a lot of these bundles either. And I did not buy my first Steam game until what, what a little less than a decade ago. Man, I'm not. I'm not going to distract myself by trying to figure out how many Steam games I actually have. Uh, if you have a lot of, if you have a fuck ton of Steam games, if you have over 25,000 Steam games, you may have run into a little bug where uh, the client wouldn't work. They have fixed it since then. Finally. Finally. I, I, finally. <laughs> um, here's all I'm going to say, man. I love this. This is from PC Gamer. Everything's going to be in our show notes after the fact. Go check it out. LinuxGameCast.com. But what I love about this, somebody had to report that. Somebody was like, man, not only is this a bug, <laughs> it's starting to get on my nerves. You you have to you have to imagine right now that there's more hours of like gameplay content on Steam than there are hours in your life. So uh, that's a very uh, good question you have for me. Mirror, mirror in chat is asking uh, the ETA for when I'll have uh, boobs boob- games uh, on Steam. Well, well it's going to be hard have because boobs games on Steam. <laughs> the The current count on Steam is just over fifty one thousand, so there aren't enough games on Steam for me to be able to accrue those many. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a brand new Unity version coming out with a brand new yeah. asset store, whole new host of assets. Reading flips. from the article, I mean, they make up a good point. Um, just in twenty twenty, there were uh, ten thousand two hundred and sixty three games added to Steam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. I, Most of them are those one dollar asset flips, but yeah. Okay, okay. How about this? <laughs> I, I mean, I am currently one hundred percent at a point that I thought I'd never be at. Is I have more Steam games than I will ever possibly be able to finish or yeah. care to. More importantly, yeah, more, more hours of gameplay than are hours left in your life. And for me, this is a very strange thing because until we started getting the uh, influx of like games that were on Linux and then we have Proton and all that. I didn't have this problem for the vast majority of my life. And I thought I'd never be one of these people. I'm like, Oh, I guess I'll play this new quake clone getting built on the quake <laughs> engine. Uh, the thing that kind of shot my, uh, because, uh, up until earlier today, I had a delightfully palindromic number of 1221 games on steam. Uh, but then Arthur was like, no, now you have 1222. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I saw you, I saw you begging for free games. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't begging. I was like, okay, I, I'll buy near, but uh, my numbers are delightfully palindromic at this point, so my OCD is very much okay with this. So that was broke and then our third and... said new. No. Okay, then you get that, so you immediately went out and bought near. 
<laughs> no, so, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna wait till payday next week before I buy uh, near because that's a full price game. Oh uh, no, and, <laughs> this is the problem and, with Linux gamers, Pedro Mateus. And incidentally, uh, yeah, I'm poor. <laughs> that's if, my if, problem. Any of you, if any of you were curious, I have 733 games on Steam apparently. You still have more than me, then, but you, yeah, you, you have more stuff. I tend to like only add stuff that I intend to play or at least believe I intend to play at some point. <laughs> I convinced myself that I will eventually open this yeah, game once. Pr- There's pretty about much. 400 games that I still haven't played, so oh, I, I take so long to get to the 800 one day, of them guys. I have. Right. <laughs> what, so, one day? Something we've talked about on the show before, um, they were doing a little bit of a beta test over at the Valves, and uh, they're working on like playtests. So if you're developing, you're like, I want to set up a little thing for playtests and make it like wicked easy. You know, we're not going to have to organize this through our discord or on the forums or anything like that you can just request access and you can hop in and hey when i want to open up little batches for it i can do it right from a dashboard my little um developer dashboard well it's been rolled out completely now so you can invite your players to test your game without having to manage keys external mailing list none of that nonsense it's right there and man there's no possible way anything could be bad about this, Pedro. No, no, no mm-hmm. none whatsoever. It's not like Valve have ever implemented any kind of systems that have been massively abused or anything. Green light, early access. No, uh, no, no. Trading cards. No, 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 no. <laughs> so here, here, here's the thing, though. I think the I think the window for abuse here is a lot less than previous solutions because, like. So, so Ven, you, you you bring up the example in the show notes, right? Like, sub, sub to my Patreon at this level. I don't think people are going to be like, I don't think relatively intelligent people, and I think that's the big <laughs> caveat here, are going to be paying a full game's price recurring every month for access to a Steam queue. There are definitely people who are going to try and abuse it, but I think the potential for abuse is I, I considerably less. I, I just threw that in the notes. What I said, you know, like, yeah, yeah. support me at this level gets you access to the... Um, you know, playtest, which honestly, I just threw that in there because Pedro was like, what could go wrong? You know, it, it, ironically, <laughs> it, like, well, first thing that comes to mind. But honestly, I wouldn't be against that. You know, if uh, it was an early access game, whatever, and they wanted to branch out with their financing options, they're like, hey, we only want people who are serious and especially like multiplayer type shit. Mm-hmm. Or you know, the quality of just having somebody who has five cents or a buck into the game they're going to be infinitely better than just you random like hey yes i'll get into it and yeah re- review bomb because oh this in development game was broken the one time i tried it and never tried it a second time <sighs> so I think you're always good- gonna get those kinds of reviews but yeah i'm just glad that it's a real boy now and you can request access whether or not you'll get it that's gonna be up to uh, individual still, still waiting on your space station space 14 clones, invite yes oh no i got that uh, after two weeks ah. muscle tell <laughs> <laughs> oh man so we need to introduce uh Ooh, yes there's like lightning and thunderstorms all around here to the point where i got home today and it was one of those downpours <laughs> to where you just like you know what this car is pretty neat i'm just gonna hang out here for a little while man but yeah, so if I mean, if you got if you got twenty five thousand games on Steam and you're looking to increase your collection now that your Steam client won't crash, what's a good way to locate them? Yes, the Steam is well. One of the things that they've been trying to do is trying to convince people who are selling their games on their platform that you don't need to go into the uh, to the Epic Store or to the Switch in order to be discovered. We're introducing new ways for people to browse Steam. And they've been doing it for a while, and now they've added the categories button, which is okay. Uh, You also get the new and noteworthy, which are like the the ones that Valve themselves think, okay, these games uh, are worth highlighting, probably the ones that paid them the most money, but what have you. They... (laughs) Um, yeah, basically it gets split up. You have the two buttons, the new and north land, are... land support. Oh my God. Yes. You can actually filter out network multiplayer games. Finally. 
you can filter those out. But what I was worried about, it's because what I do when I go to the Steam store is I go, okay, let's just open the categories, go to Steam West plus Linux, and then browse new releases. There we go. That's the list I'm looking for. And it still takes the exact same amount of clicks to get to that yes. list. Yes. And what, if, what, say you're going to keep tinkering with that kind of stuff, Valve. Here's an idea, completely wild, out of the blue. How about you give people an option to pin a specific view that they like instead of the ones that you think they might like? Because not everyone browses the Steam store the same way as you so clearly point out in this very article. So give us an option. Maybe? I mean, they're, they're, they do have a lot of personalized cues here. Uh, one <laughs> thing I really wish they would have added, though, is some way to, like, cross-section these categories. So if you want, like, furry erotic RP MMOs or something, or, like... You can take if, those boxes after you're already... Right, right, right. But I, 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 yeah, but, I mean, I would like to have just, like, this and this, show, just from the UI. I think it would be a really easy way to just better contextualize some of the games and better narrow down what you're looking for. But, yeah. I can definitely be down with it. I like that now you can just get from the top bar, you can get directly to the specials because that's something I try to keep an eye on two or three times a week. And normally you'd have to scroll down a bit and they'd have the big chunky rectangles and one of them would be like specials. Then you sort, then you make sure it's like only games, not soundtracks. So that's right up there at the top. I'm happy to see that because I use that a lot for like Fridays. I'm like, yeah, is there anything? That's why we played Mirror's Edge, man. It's like two bucks. All right, fine. That'll be fun. And um, yeah, keep up the good work. I like it. So, and it, it it's weird, man. Also, Valve, please, in the client, give us a swirly bar for when we click on a link. Please. <laughs> or change the cursor to, like, I'm thinking about it. Anything. Anything. <laughs> feedback, please. Any type of feedback, <laughs> because let's face it, that store, not the most responsive thing in the world. And there is a, was it a misclick or are we waiting? Well, and uh, keep especially when a new sale is out and it's like, okay, are you going to load or are you just going to give me a 503? Okay, never mind. But, well, <laughs> so you might remember. Con control R to pay respects. <laughs> you might remember last week, um, a little game came out um, for Linux and for Mac. Metro Exodus. Finally, you know, after the home exclusive on Epic, then another year on Steam and um, 4A and they rolled out. And they're like, hey, here you guys go. You know, I've been waiting for a long time, but like cool we're gonna get a great sale like nope I'm like fine i'm just gonna buy some copies <laughs> then because i'm like that and i did but but it wasn't the best linux native port we've seen <laughs> i gotta say that because i do remember i had to back the tape up and i was polite about it i'm like hey thanks for doing this but this genuinely feels like uh Linux game from like five, six years ago. I mean, with the slamming into the wrong monitor and like the windowing mode and doing full screen exclusive type stuff. Like, just, just didn't feel right. Didn't hate on it, but flippity jibbity blah bo. You might know him as Ethan Lee. Uh, had a little tweet. He's like, yo, check this. The Metro Redux Linux versions are like the perfect checklist of what most big ports were like a decade ago. Our check marks, stereo only, loading thread hitches, <laughs> got dang GL, static SDL that breaks if you use dynamic APIs, somehow managed to screw up SDL game controller. Man, we sucked in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me that they reused a lot of that old tooling for... No. Uh, Exodus. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's not like Linux has progressed since 2014. No. No. We're we're still running we're still running like kernel 2.32 or something, right? It's yeah. It's just like one of those 2.632, weird... that's the one. Yeah. There you go. There's some issues. Now they did manage a lot of parody stuff. I saw um I think it was Arthur in, in uh Discord earlier this week. It's like, how do I get past this dessert level? I'm like, oh, Got to do the same thing. It's still got the same bug that Windows does. Lord to medium. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get over an area. Um, do you think they're going to come back and like update this? Because, you know, everyone's waiting on the um, 
RTX new Redux-ish version of Exodus. Mm-hmm. So hopefully they get it sorted. I have more faith in that than another game that I'll be bringing up in a <laughs> little while. But we do have some news with the uh, DX12 and the Vulcans and all that bit. Yeah, VK D3D Proton, that thing you need to run if you want to run any sort of game made with DirectX 12. They have uh, exciting new release. Version 2.3 is out, and it has uh, ray tracing support, uh, oh. supporting uh, DXR through VK KHR ray tracing. It's not using the NVIDIA specific extensions; it's just using the generic ones. But uh, it it works as of now on NVIDIA AMD driver support isn't there. AMD GPU Pro doesn't have it. My money is on Mesa getting it like actually performant before AMD does. But you know, why 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 why, why would I not have faith in the AMD driver people? <laughs> Man, at all. Well, AMD uh, making drivers since when? <laughs> yeah, but uh, right, can I, right can now, I do uh, like a little side jack real quick. What was it? Was I was watching? Uh, do you ever watch like PC World? They do like their own uh, like YouTube live stream and Twitch. They do a podcast nope. each and every week. Well, they typically have on um, like people from AMD, Nvidia stuff like that, and they on like the AMD guy, and they were taking questions from the audience. And one of the questions that got through is like, "So what about your Linux GUI and drivers and stuff like that?" And I was like, "Huh." I mean, I'm not exaggerating. It's like, I, I don't, I, I, I'll have to go ask. He, no clue about anything on Linux. So, oh, yeah. It's, and it's he, an entirely yeah. different team. Well, he's, no, he's in charge of the Radeon, like PR and all the, he, oh. he was the guy to ask, have on the he show. He was the RTG person Rep. to yeah. ask. Yeah. Oh. And he, he was like, oh, God. He, to the level where he wasn't even going to attempt to bullshit. He's like, fuck if I know, man. <laughs> Well, it's, it's Linux, and I'm like, man, they're gonna pick apart whatever I say. Keep my keep my mouth shut. Um, but, as you were saying, but yeah, as I was saying, yeah, uh, we have a couple of games that have uh, DirectX 12 ray tracing support working right now. Control appears to be fully operational, according to Hans Christian, and uh, Ghost Runner has been tested, but not exhaustively. So yeah, uh, there's also uh, in this quite a performance bump if you're on AMD. Uh, RDNA 2 gets a substantial bump. Even Polaris gets a little one. Oh. So that's pretty cool. Um, so if you're on a 580 or whatever, then this will help uh, with the DirectX 12 performance. Always nice to see. Uh, it's it's we, we make the joke, but yeah, every year your AMD card will get faster and faster it, on Linux. It does. It does. <laughs> this is not a joke. This is brilliant to see. I, I Just going from like in such a short span of DX 11s never going to work. And man, I hope virtual programming or feral does their DX 11 magic. So we can play this game. Now I'm like, yay, DX 11. That's, we know that's going to work. Then from DX 12 to, yeah, Hey, it loads <laughs> to, yeah. okay. Now, now we get the Vulcan acceleration. It's like, Oh yeah, let's have some ray tracing on that. Fuck it. We're Linux. Deal yeah. with it. Indeed. And API, this API version, mapping. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, this version actually fixes an issue that uh, makes it very relevant for, well, Proton Experimental, which is what we're next talking about. It uh, oh. specifically avoids uh, driver crashes in Forza Horizon 4, which, coincidentally enough, uh, is now available on Proton Experimental. Uh, it contains VKD 3D 2.3, as well as all the changes that were already there from uh, Proton 6.3-2. Uh, the, the other one that I kind of noticed was, uh, Mountain Blade, uh, Banner Lord is now playable and the origin overlay is, they describe it as functional, which, uh, probably means that you, if you have any, uh, origin friends, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but you can play friends, uh, you could play with probably better friends. friends than Bethesda friends. I mean, I mean, yes, they, 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 ha- do they have to log in a lot. <laughs> they do specifically call out that it takes two is the one game they've actually tested. So yes. your mileage may vary with other multiplayer so games. So when are we going to play that? Uh, Battlefront. Battlefront? I don't know. It takes I mean, two. Not... It takes two to play Battlefront, yeah. No, it's about the game it takes two. The Tango? <laughs> I can't tell if you're being stupid on purpose. Sometimes it's blurry. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, <laughs> probably. Yeah, no, It Takes Two is probably the one that was making active use of the origin overlay while you're playing the game through Steam. Uh, uh. So, yeah, it is 
probably why that they brought that up in specific, but that may very well work with other games that only use the origin friends as a means of uh, multiplayer. I got. I gotta wonder though. <laughs> I gotta wonder. They they have one bug fix here. Fix Red Dead Redemption Two. Not purchase error. That, yeah, that, that's gonna be great. You, you fire up your game. It's like you didn't buy this game. The fuck I did. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Does somebody got tired of seeing that <laughs> error. They're like, oh, that, oh, got another one of these. Man, Red Dead. <laughs> that thing needs to go on sale. Is all I'm saying. Because that. That's like Grand Theft Horse. <laughs> it, that I, I need another after I get done with my near uh, experience. I I because that's like one of those you, games you, you, you just your put to near the death side. experience. You know, there's like <laughs> that's like a year's worth of fuck around game. But all right, I'm I'm glad it's up and running. We got some uh, new beta stuff though. We do. Yeah, the beta client has been released, and uh, not very exciting stuff here. Um, oh. <laughs> Well, I'm, if, if, if you're like me and you have a Switch Pro controller and you turn Rumble on, uh, you may have experienced uh, rumbling making your controller fuck up. So they have uh, they have fixed that. Also, uh, they added some custom sources for joystick dead zone controls. So basically, you can set there being no dead zone in the joystick. You can set your own value or you can use the device's default value. I mean, I personally don't really play with my joystick all that much, really. But um, so you, you know, I'm sure pe- <laughs> I'm sure people appreciate the option that if it's provided. Pedro, like, what's the distinction between like when I, when I think joystick? I'm just thinking like Atari joystick or um, flight like controller. Yes. Yeah, Microsoft yeah. Sidewinder. flight control sidewinder type of situation. Uh, yeah, those joysticks. The more you use them, the more they start to get a little bit of a lean to them, like. Your other joystick, but the uh, <laughs> mine, it, mine had of, a lean before I started playing with it. So yes, uh, it, it's very much a problem with analog things. It's also a problem with like controllers. Like so here's a Steam controller, the analog stick. They start to get a bit of drift now. If you Pedro, had a controller, Pedro Mateus, let's be honest with people. Neither of us have used our Steam controllers uh, enough to for that to be an issue. No. no. <laughs> Dual Shock 4 what? probably going to start happening. And, and if soon, mine but. does, I will go get my other new unboxed Steam controller. <laughs> I, I, I was looking around to see if I had my Steam controller here because I know it's covered in a thick coat of dust. I was just going to be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah um in controllers themselves you already had the option to set the dead zones which i was very much appreciative because the white the previous dual shock 4 one that i had that was all white uh that one had a bit of a um, drift to S- the saggy joystick analog stick. as it were yes uh so uh that's a very good way to stop if you have a joystick, if you want to stop it from just becoming e-waste, and it's still totally usable, it just happens to have a bit of a lean to it, you could just increase the dead zone and stop so, hitting your table. <laughs> so as much as I love talking about playing with our joysticks, we got to talk yeah. about Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we do. Forgotten Realms, specifically. Hang on, I just, uh, I, I just had to take a breath. I, I still got more. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you, got, you got any more? Keep it coming. Keep it coming, baby. <laughs> Neverwinter Nights development build 8193.22 is out. If you're uh, subscribed to the development branch like I am, and if you've been watching the... Um, Tuesday streams. That's what I've been playing. Uh, these, this new version has a new game UI. It basically uh, figures out what... Uh, uh, basically a final version of what they were trying to do with the campaign selector and the options menu. Because they had a little interim moment where the windows did not match the UI at all. They were just functional and they were there. That, that was basically, that's the development build. <laughs> if you subscribe to that, that that's kind of the stuff you're going to get. But they also have the new uh, water shader and a bunch of new improvements for it. Uh, the They've improved the translucence. Uh, they've made the appearance more uniform between the different uh shader quality i I, options. I want you to do me a favor mouse over this and click on it and see what happens hey it finally did it <laughs> hey hey it was yeah, downloading it opened the, the thing it, yeah it had like I, six I mean, html these, these, files it was downloading the, these guys are real real intent on making the water and never winter nights look really really good i i personally don't pay attention to too much of the water in that game. I will say, though, um, the, the Platinum Edition came with a bunch of uh, DLC uh, that was, like, non-standard. Uh, 
now apparently it's just been promoted to standard because they've been playing it they're they've been selling it long enough that like it's not really bonus anymore it's just part of the product now how yeah. old is uh never i was nuts. playing it in high school so like uh the linux version came old. out in 2002 mm-hmm. the windows version came out in 2001 uh the yeah no the big thing with this development build is that uh full screen works and it works <gasps> without shutting down all of your other monitors like the original version of Neverwinter Nights did because it was using SDL1. See, I, I, I only play the original. <laughs> I only have one monitor, so it doesn't really affect there are me. A lot of peop- there are a lot of people that are like that. Uh, the people from the server I used to play on, they hate uh, Enhanced Edition with a passion. I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> Because you don't like the overall visual fidelity was a lot warmer. <laughs> it was because, a lot blockier now the, and it looked like ass comparatively. Speaking. Because now, now, now the titties from the titty mod actually look like titties and not like little triangles, and it made them very yes. upset. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not so, all the nerd nonsense. Yeah, no, no, there's there's more. Uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Um, you might have played the original back in the day in the 90s. It was uh, one of the it, I think it was the first Infinity Engine game uh, to come out. Uh, Enhanced Edition it's has my boy the Drizzle. Patch- Wait, probably not. <laughs> no, no, that, that one's not Drizzle. That's I think that's just the ball spawn. So many balls. Uh, but yeah, 2.6 is out for the Enhanced Edition. Now, the big thing here is they have removed support for uh, 32-bit systems. So, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you really, really, really need to play Baldur's Gate on your 32-bit machine running modern Linux, GemRB exists, and that's an open-source Infinity Engine. It actually works with the Enhanced Edition uh, content as well, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, now you're or going to have to the original to... version. It, it works. No, no, no. On, on a modern Linux. Modern Linux. That was my caveat. Why? Um, <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> why is it Linux, man? It's just like why as well. Why don't you just install Windows <laughs> dual boot? I'm I'm just I'm just saying that there is there is a there is a way to do it if you really really need to. Uh, but now, yeah. Wait now, a minute. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tw- play twenty year old? <laughs> wait, wait. Are you, are you trying to play? There's more than one way to do something. No, especially on only, Linux. God, only one way. God. Linux is all about doing things one way God. and only God. one way. Yeah, no. Exactly. I, I feel that, the same that, that's way, why we're still that's why we're still using terminals to play audio files. I feel the same way and we're GitHub. all using KDE. Indeed. <laughs> KDE 1.0. Um but yeah, uh so that's the thing. You 1. can check that out. Sucked, man. You had to get 1.3 was where it was on. 1.3? Alright. Uh yeah, they, they added a bunch of new voice work as well, uh new localizations. Uh and it, it basically applies to all of the enhanced editions for Baldur's Gate, both one and two. Uh lots of game balance nice stuff. And I swindle. If you care about AD and D second edition spell balance, man, this article is for you. Otherwise, give it a pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, man. <laughs> oh, there's there's Drizzle because he does show up in this game. Oh, Drizzle's in this game. Drizzle yeah. sh- Drizzle's in this game. I, I don't know if like, I, I can keep going. Gate is man. kind of a big thing in the Drizzle story. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they I'm, keep mentioning it. I, I'm I'm eleven Drizzles in, and I'm like, I, and I'm not paying like firm attention to these things they're just like hey it's dungeons and dragons type shit going on in the background i'm working um i, I think i'm good i don't know you, i you know what i i checked out on drizzle books mm-hmm. after like the 15th or 16th one so like ev- ev- eventually you're just like okay this is just the same stuff again, and again i only and again. read nine but okay <laughs> <laughs> there's like there's like three dozen of them now. He pumps out one a year. Bob, good old, the, good old the, Bob in Salvatore. The de- in the defense of the drizzle books, they're like short. So yeah, they, yeah, they're only like two hundred pages a book. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. All right. It, it's it's light reading. Uh, don't forget me. Don't forget me new when games. I'm gone. Yeah, it's a brand new game. Uh, this one kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Thimbleweed Park uh, mixed with a little bit of L.A. Noir. Uh, basically, it's an adventure game where you jump into people's minds and you probe around and you try to are solve mysteries and doing play puzzles. Ludo Narocon? Yes, we are. Ludo Narocon. Ludo yeah. Donkey Disco Bobbles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, man. April 23rd through 26th. <laughs> Indeed, man, I, I, I got, I'm not, you're not here for my Ludo narrative fativity rant, but anyways, um, and it, it's, it's available right now. You can pick it up. Uh, reviews are a little bit mixed. Uh, I didn't really read into why, um, apparently the menu, to. the menu, 
Yeah. There's apparently not a lot of music. Um, oh. There's not a lot of gameplay here. Um, it's very, very much emphasis on the art direction and sound design. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but you can definitely check it out. It's 10% off now. You can pick it for, ooh, 15 bucks US. That's a little, that's a little pricey. <laughs> the narrative is a sophomoric joke. <laughs> <laughs> and anime bullshit. Time to move on to the next I... one, Pedro. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, we're going to stay in the exact same genre. This one is uh, Silicon Dreams uh, Pipe Cyberpunk Interrogation. I'm not entirely sure that's a valid command, at least not on uh, Born Again Shell, but hey. The <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Apparently, man, Pedro Mateus, you and I both know that somewhere in this interface, they're going to like, hey, let's make it all hacker and there'll be a fucking mother- fuck mothering C prompt. My favorite, yeah. Pa- actually, yeah. my favorite part about <laughs> Tron Legacy was the fact that that in the hacking scene it was done entirely in Emacs, and I'm like, my people, my people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, it is very much along the lines of it also the cyberpunk. So you can go, you get right now. Yeah, yes. a cyberpunky interrogation type of game, but you're an in, you're inter uh, interrogating. Um, humans and you're an android and you have to figure out who the deviants are and all of this predominance of cyberpunk in games lately just kind of brings to mind that cyberpunk 2077 did not really live up to the hype how could it no video game could live up to that kind of hype sorry half-life 3 no cd Uh, project red (laughs) magic no we'll, we'll get it done it'll work perfectly on ps4 so yeah the, i think developers now are just going okay we might as well just get this shit out now just throw it at the wall see what sticks i don't know right. i don't know about that <laughs> cyberpunk has been pretty consistent mainstay as like a genre or theme in a lot of these games that we've been th- throwing chairs at over the years i will say though based on the description there's a lot more now <laughs> there is a lot more now but to say that oh people are just jumping on the bandwagon that is a little disingenuous um i didn't say that i said that they were hoping to jump on the bandwagon but that bandwagon went off the road and <laughs> well okay <laughs> there's a way to look at it man it's like cyberpunk if you were thinking about building a game you're developing a game Cyberpunk 2077 was announced, what, how many years ago? I'd be like, mm-hmm. hey, <laughs> maybe I want to hit that genre and kind of ride in on some of that. So, you know what? Let's take our game design idea and uh, let's sprinkle a little cyberpunk shit on it. I mean, this this one actually reminds me of a very cyberpunk uh, board game I played called uh, Inhuman Conditions, which is actually free online. You can check it out at robot.management. Okay. I wanted to give that a plug because I was like plugging uh, indie devs for putting out tabletop how dare games. You? Uh, it's a good it's a good uh, party game too. Uh it's all about like trying to convince the other person that you're either uh that you're not an evil robot. It's good stuff. Um but, you know, Silicon Dreams, there's a sort of digital less version of it has a narrative. It's also on sale 10% off. Also for the same prices, don't forget me. So, if you got to pick one, I don't know, it's Sophie's choice. So, a uh, game came out that I was really excited about and I, I heard it's just like I normally it's, don't even come out and say it, this, it, but I'm going to It's riding the cyberpunk and, train. Um, yeah, this was like pre cyberpunk train, baby. This was from when did this, this was like, PS3 oh, cyberpunk. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like old school cyberpunk, man, like OG cyberpunk. When still, the, still ripping off 2077. When the genre was first invented back in mm. the PS3 era. Exactly, yes. Of course, I'm talking about Near Egg Plant. The Replicant, Replican is out. And yeah, we know it's a Proton game. But I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to burn a heretic purchase on this because. For fuck all whatever reason, I really enjoyed Near Automata. I did. It was really genuinely, I think the first time in my life, I played a game that somebody had described as a piece of art or an art piece. And the game was actually fun. And it had a good story. And it put a bow on the end of it. I'm like, I like how you did that. I'd like to see after en- After ending number 27. You get like the four or five good ones. I mean, you could play the game three times. And they, just that alone to... You yeah, tell if you some, want to see everything, three. You tell somebody that um, you got to uh, beat a fucking game three times. Like, get wrecked. That's never going to happen. But they did it in a way where it made sense. You're like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, 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 oh. And by the second time you beat it, you're looking forward to like, oh, I get one more go at this. Got it. So this landed. This came out Friday. Um, I want to give everybody just a quick report on it because, hey, I have a working Linux system and I kind of know what the fuck I'm doing. So in a lot of, I've seen way too many people running around. I was like, re it's bad. It doesn't work. They don't know. They don't even know the game. So 
on, you know, my basic system, it will basically run on a fucking calculator because at the end of the day, when it comes to gaming, I have a first gen Ryzen. So if you got like Ryzen 1500, 1700, that's going to be fine. I got a 2060 graphics card. So I'm going to say performance wise, 1080p at 1440p, it'll slam up against 60. Not a problem. Now, if you have a uh, 120 or a 144 refresh rate, it'll also slam up against that and it'll be batshit broken. So um, mm-hmm. keep that in mind. But yeah, with the Proton Experimental under the box, hit play, boom, I was done. And um, it is kept at 60 and anti-lacing, it doesn't really exist. It's using whatever the opposite of that is. No matter how high you crank it, it doesn't do fuck or all. <laughs> and I thought that was quite impressive. One of the reasons I'm playing at 1440, because it makes it a little less shit. At UHD 2160p, uh, it's got about 48. I mean, not really playable in my book. But um, as far as the game, it's an old game. Came out a long time ago on the PS3. That means it's designed like an old game. If you're like me, I never played it. I don't have nostalgia nostalgia vision for this at all. No rose-colored glasses. There's a lot of, everything's got its own little section. There's a lot of loading screens to break that shit up. They didn't remaster any of that. You still got to sit through all that bullshit. Fortunately, loading's real quick, but it did break up the gameplay. Uh, lighting, kind of like wicked flat. And I just don't like the look of it. But uh, graphically, I want to say it looks like a fan-made HD remake with some new models, some new animation to the point where like the running animation of your main character is like, that looks like nines. Like, a lot like <laughs> nines. <'cause> it is. <laughs> then I go to the Steam page when I'm reading the reviews and all that shit. And I'm like, DLC? I'm like, oh, okay, there's the missing textures. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm now I'm just like, fuck it. You copy pasta nines from that. And like, so, you know, now it looks better, but with the new models and new animation rigging, they don't hundred percent like mesh with the original world. It just looks that little bit off. Combat seems to be all right. I don't think they fucked with that too much. It's very near ish. So I'm down with that. Um, but I'm going to say at the end of the day, never played this game before. Uh, the, it's okay, but it's not worth 60 fucking bucks. I'll go ahead and just be honest with you about that. It's not. I don't think $60 worth of work went into this. What really, the money that was spent was like re-rendering the cutscene shit. Like the environment. <laughs> yeah, make that look better at proper 1080p instead of 900p like the PS3. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's jarring because, you know, that's rendered and it's not got the like anti-aliasing issues and shit and it's all 60 fps and it's kind of brilliant but the rest of the game not so much uh, i'm gonna finish playing through it just to get my money out of it but i i'd wait I would, I would, yes i wonder what the ab comparison is if you were like to play near the original on like rpcs3 with like a fan texture pack or whatever with the, what the delta would actually look yeah, like. i'd like to see this i this is what i would say like an hd remake would look like from a fan team if they just Somebody handed him the assets. This is what I would expect a group given a year of volunteers to come up with, not uh, not have the audacity to come out and go, and that'll be $60. Like, get fucked. Um, and to everyone out there saying, hold, we got to wait. Don't worry, they'll fix it in an update. I got four good fucking year reasons that you don't need to hold your breath for that because that's called near. Automata. That's it's been four years, and the the only reason we might get an update to that is because of this game, because the internet. Uh, lost no, it's, it's because shit. they announce they announce the improved version of Near Automata for the PS5. When then? Okay, <laughs> you know, let, let me explain to you how that works, because they know they got to sell this <laughs> motherfucking game, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> oh, this one. Even the creator, uh, the uh, creative designer, mm-hmm. uh, Yoko Taro, yeah. uh, he said. Yeah, th- th- this is not going to sell very well. I mean, there's already 2,500 reviews on Steam that say the opposite, but hey! <laughs> well, it's, this is something, I don't know what people were expecting. You, you're going to get what you're going to get. It's Japanese development studio. I'm just going to say traditionally, this doesn't buck the trend. <laughs> PC gaming is a third class citizen. Yes. And that's just <laughs> how it is. You get what you get, be happy with what you get, shut up. There you go. Well, on that bombshell, coming up next, uh, we get, we're we talking about potential KOTOR remakes out of Aspire and Fences. Not the James Earl Jones play, but some other kind. It's time for the news. We hope you won't come down with the blues, 
but I got nothing else to run with that. The clues. <laughs> Have you turned into a religious vegetable? <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm I mean, a cucumber. I look like Jesus, but let's not, you know, not, who told let's you? not assume who told that you? I green. We, we, we just got to get to the bottom of this. Who put it in your head that you look anything like Yahweh? Um, he, he looks like Boy Love. Work? I th- I think he looks like Boy Love. <laughs> I don't know, man. When I, I, I see uh, Pedro, I was like, mm, you don't really strike me with that, you know, Sephardic. Uh, um, just not feeling it. I, I, I put I me in the sun for like, a couple of hours. My skin tone says I don't do that for you. Free. You are you are literally the only one on this podcast who claims you look like Jesus. No one in the audience. No one on the cast makes that assessment whatsoever. I don't know. I listen. Where's your cult? <laughs> It's, it's here. This is the cult. <laughs> Linux Gamecast. We wear the wizard robes oh, okay. that, you, that, that you guys paid for. Here's the handy transition to our Patreon where you gave us money not, to uh, wear cult. wizard robes not, every not week. Cult. Yeah, not a cult. It's a it's a pyramid scheme. Oh, shit. Uh, Patreon. Shit. We, we need like the happy birthday thing that just says, you know, with a glitter on it that stretches out. No, we can hang it in the background. <laughs> Oh yeah, totally it, just, it just drops with like confetti and balloons. <laughs> oh, just fuck like, yes. not a call. <laughs> the kazoo. Yeah. Uh head on head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash nextgamecast. If you subscribe to it, you get some cool stuff. Uh starting from a dollar, you get access to the Discord channel and the pre pre super shows. And that's pretty nice. You get to hear us. I don't know. This this week it's testing audio stuff, but some weeks it's not that. Maybe some weeks you're interested in testing audio stuff. Like, I wonder how they do the audio. You'll learn. You yes, you will. You will learn something. A uh, little bit more, you get access to the show notes. You can make suggestions for stories. You can issue corrections. You can just troll us in show notes, and we'll be like, "Oh no, now I have to read them every week while I'm on the toilet." Um, you can a bunch of other cool Patreon stuff available for you. Lots of exclusive content. You can even buy your way onto the show if you're financially responsible enough. Ooh, but you know, you're no be pretty irresponsible. No, no, no one's taking us up on that. You cowards, do it! I dare you. Um, if you want to be really psychotic, uh, we have a level above, uh, what do we, we have a sponsors here. Yes. If, if you want us to plug your shit. Oh, I dare you. <laughs> I, uh, you, you, you wouldn't do it. You wieners cowardly audience. No, we gotta, you, we gotta you say that as like, ah, clever sales tactic guys. Like no, I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, why would you? No. <laughs> go, we, just, we, we just we just gotta go to our audience. We got a store. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy stuff from there. You can buy t-shirts. You can buy masks. You can buy coffee mugs and stickers and hoodies. It's great. We don't have LGC pants yet. Negative. But soon? Question mark? Right I hope so. I want, you know I, I want some LGC get, yoga pants. I want to get some mats. Hmm. I'll just see Matt. Matt. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, I'll have Pedro faces. Then clean my feet on. <laughs> oh, no. so you can. Okay. All right. All right. No, okay. I, I, I want. I want. I want LGC yoga pants with Pedro on both ass cheeks, so I can sit on his face. I can do the face all over design. You just got to deal with some Pedro face in between your legs. I'm fine with that. All right. <laughs> We got we got wish we got wish lists as well. If you head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, that's over the support button. Um, if you want if you want to see what kind of equipment we use, if you want to see what kind of equipment we want to use, uh, check that out. If you buy stuff off our wish zones, you can send us a little message, and we have to read it on the air. No one's done that though. this week. Very very tiny. Yeah, it's message. like 160 characters or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's like an old re- re- remember tweet. tweets back in the day. Yeah. now it's yeah. 280. <laughs> Before you had to actually like compose your thoughts. Uh, Artharon bought something for Pedro, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned it earlier, but uh, yeah, Artharon basically went. Uh, now you don't get to have the 1221 anymore. Now you have 1222. And he bought me Ghost of a Tale. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's a game that I've had on my wish list for a long time, ever since I saw like their video for their, uh, I think it was Indiegogo campaign. And yeah, no, that looked like a very fun game. And I, I had to massage it a little bit. It, it it liked to crash after a few minutes of running. So yeah, after some massaging, it actually works properly now. So thank you very much, Arthur. Pedro Essential Massages. Right Coming on. soon to Patreon. Right I want to thank everybody for your support. Uh, instead of doing commercials, ad reads, and all that fun stuff. You might not like what we say, but you know we made it. You know, we're not being influenced by anything except you. You can tell us die to fire each and, and drugs. every day. And drugs. Also <laughs> drugs. Hop in our Discord. Also, if you're a Twitch sub, hop in Discord. We're there. We're hanging out. If you got questions and shit like that, which we're actually in there. 
It's always fun when somebody's asking a question. I'm like, hey, and like, I'm like, what? Wait, this is where we talk shit. We, mm-hmm. the most disused thing in all of LG Seedom is our group chat on Google Hangouts. We just talk in Discord. So even if you just want to show up and creep, that's a good place to do it. Indeed. So, Ven, I heard you like Dungeons and Dragons based games with uh, lightsabers. Yes, with lightsabers, even. Is, is that D&D canon? Has, D&D absolutely has lightsabers. Oh, yes, okay. that is canon. All right, fine. <laughs> and yeah, KOTOR was made with the Neverwinter Nights engine, so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's based off of the uh, 2000s WotC uh, Star Wars game, which all, is based all off of Dungeons and Dragons. Like, yeah, it fucking looks like it, Pedro Mateus. Um, <laughs> where are we talking about? Where are we talking about the Enterprise? Well, all right. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake is reportedly in the work. Okay, why? By Aspire. Yeah. Ooh. That's kind of neat, isn't it? Aspire's mm-hmm. working on it, so there's a chance, hashtag, maybe. Hmm? It'll, it'll, I, I it'll definitely have Mac like support. That. Well, uh, okay. I, I would very much like I, that. I did a little bit of research on this, and yeah, man, uh, the one from 2003, uh, the Mac port, so Aspire was responsible for that. So they've had hands on code, and this would not be their first rodeo. Um, I've, I've never played the game, never had any interest in it, but. I know you played um, the second one again, not this game. <laughs> and I will, I will just say this. I, hey, well, the second one I didn't necessarily enjoy, but I also know it's that type of game where people will fucking cut you if you say a bad word about it. So yeah, pe- people, people really love their KOTOR. And to be fair, back in two, th- again, we, we always have to preface this back in 2003. This was the hot shit, right? This was uh, amazing. Like, dude, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There, you, there wasn't really a lot like that in terms of like the story and scope. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll be a little bit more than a high res texture pack on just KOTOR 1. I wonder if they're going to do a straight remake, if they're going to like change anything. But, you know, it, it goes to show you now that uh, EA, Electronic Arts, doesn't have exclusive access to the Star Wars IP anymore. There's a, there's a, there's a new hope for some kind of native Linux Star Wars games to strike back something something Ewoks. Did that, that um, yeah, like you were doing so well there? <laughs> do, do you think that like Ewok that crashed on the hang glider like survived? Oh, absolutely. He was like crippled for life. Okay. Is that really better though? <laughs> I think so. Okay. But then again, I insist on people staying on life support far beyond any sort of reasonable did, did they, termination did, like, point. Did they give him a new nickname? Like Thud Thud? <laughs> uh, no. No, they didn't. Okay, that's unfortunate. So, what the hell are BO fences? Uh, they're stinky fences. Honest, they have, like, body odor. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're body odor fences. No, they're basically memory fences that... Uh, allow for uh, CPU and GPU synchronization in memory uh, in Mesa drivers, specifically, uh, at the DRI uh, level. And, well, uh, what's his name? Uh, Marek Olsuk uh, has some <laughs> proposals uh, for getting rid of uh, BO fences. And is, that, is that how you pronounce that name? Marek Olsuk? I heard Olsuk, so I don't know. Yes, yeah, okay. he, he's the all suck. <laughs> Look, Jordan's got he, Freud on his pa, mind, too. Pa, it pa, is pa, like the all father with more suck. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I wrote my Linux engine to use all suck instead of. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but dream. yeah, <laughs> the current way that the BO fences are implemented, they don't really. Uh, they they work, but they limit performance and increase uh, latency. And if you are hoping to do any kind of uh, parallelized uh, processing between the CPU and the GPU or between two GPUs, forget it. it it's just not going to happen. So uh, Merrick has a bit of a pro- uh, proposal to get rid of it basically uh, fix uh, or change the way that the fencing works in memory to allow for better latency and just implicitly synchronize the two GPUs or the CPU and the uh, the GPU and yeah just manage memory more efficiently to make performance better and from what I got out of reading all of this is this could give the Mesa drivers 
a significant boost in performance to the point where it would give NVIDIA a bit of a run for its money when it comes to just your typical rasterization scenario. Well, did you <laughs> bring up who Mr. Um, Merrick Olsak is? I did not, know. He <laughs> is the guy AMD gives the money digits to so he can write the AMD Mesa stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, he's, he's yeah. employed by the AMD's open source laboratory. Laboratory. So he's like the guy to do this, by the way, is what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and if you want the Kelly and, and driver to become better, yeah. <laughs> and and like the, so, this this is an RFC. It's a request for a comment. He just put the idea out there. There's not. There's still a lot of uh, specifics that need to be worked out. Um, and so he's he's just interested to see what the the graphics stack community think. And you know, reading into it, it looks like the idea needs some work. There's some talk about implementing this sort of fencing in user space so that the kernel doesn't even care about that. Uh, but then there are some other deadlock scenarios where you don't want that. There's security concerns. Apparently, Vulcan's security model is there is no security model, so that's a bit of a problem <laughs> as well. Um, so yeah, uh, it's interesting development. Uh, if anything comes out of it, it's probably going to be a few years before we see the end results. But it's good yeah. to see that people are actively attacking the problem and trying to come up with creative solutions. So, so, so what you're saying is by the end of the month, my AMD card's gonna, just going to wreck at 3090, right? Your Intel one will. Yes. <laughs> yes, the XZ that hasn't been released yet. No, 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 no. Your, your <laughs> HD graphics 2000 Man, will outperform a 2080. Intel, I need a new little cheap video card for Jackbox. And goddamn, if I wouldn't have bought one, if you had like a $50 drop-in card that <laughs> had an HDMI and display port that could do UHD, I would give you some money. I don't care. So, Alpha 0.9 of what you say, Super Tux Party, man. Uh, we've been following this since it was just like a rando prototype and much work has continued to go into it. The big ones from this, I think for me, they finally added support for high DPI, which is neat. Outside of that bunch of menu UI tweaks and all the other fun stuff, what is Super Tux Party? Jordan? It's Mario Party, but with Super Tux. Okay. Uh, so it has all the open source mascots like Beastie and Tux and Godet and whatever. I, I, but, I, I'm a huge fan. There's a complete new look for the kernel compiling mini game. I just love being able to read that. Oh man, <laughs> kernel compiling mini. Yeah, where you just actually just straight up have to compile a kernel. It also yeah. it'll also run some it'll also mine some Ethereum on your computer while you're at it. It would no, be no, kind no, of but, fun uh, if there were some cheats if you like, you know, make old config. You're like, oh, burp, burp, burp. Yeah. Um, but uh the other thing they're doing is now they're saying that the game has gotten to a point where uh there are enough features that they can start implementing network multiplayer, but before they want to do that, they're doing some code cleanup, which is probably a good thing. If mm-hmm. you're gonna start implementing network multiplayer, you want to make sure that you know your framework is solid and there's not like weird edge cases so you know good on them for that they're getting to it faster than super tux cart did so you know pro tip. <laughs> well there's a new cake design that <laughs> that was the thing that jumped out at me thanks and for chiming in I jesus thought, <laughs> first thing i thought was the cake is a lie so okay. yeah <laughs> I'm just going to start claiming that I look like Ganesha and All right. get a lot of hate mail. Fine. That's do you're going to need more arms. So I can genuinely <laughs> That's say what you think. another project that we've been talking about <laughs> since inception on this show is Godot. What were you call yes. it? Godot. And so like, no, it's called Godot. Fine. We'll call it Godot, but you got to get rid of the insect. I'm like, fine. I mean, I, I, I've i read Samuel Beckett plays before, so I know how it's pronounced. But yeah, 3.3 is out. It's available. Uh, we've been covering a lot of the development on 3.2. Minor, minor, minor versions, uh, sub-release version. And apparently the Godot devs have decided, you know what? Maybe we should stop being like uh, the 2.6 uh, era of Linux kernels and just bump the minor number a little bit. Um, so now they've just incremented the minor, minor number. Number 3.3 is the latest in the Godot 3 branch. So you, it's everything's compatible there. It's not a major breaking change. Uh, there's a bunch of the previously in development stuff that's now in the main line. Like they have the entire web editor, which is done in Godot, uh, available online. Look at that. Look, yeah. How much nonsense can you get into with like, I just do this from what? All right, fine. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can host it from your machine and work remotely, which is really cool. Uh, we create some, yeah, some neat, very neat multi-seat uh, situations, which is really, really cool. Man, that looks uh, like they also added story, the, man. Pedro's is going to try to hit on you. <laughs> I mean, you, it might. Uh, they also added uh, Mac ARM support for the M1, uh, a couple other things for lighting and reflection and so on. Um, 
so yeah, uh, you can check that out if you're actively working on a Godot project and you're on 3.2. Upgrade to this version. There's no reason not to. It has a bunch of new stuff, some generic VR stuff as well, if you want to start dicking around with that and okay. get a little bit of a head start before 4.0 comes out. Well, I think it's really Definitely good that they went the another to way to uh, just basically say, hey, we're going to have a effectively a long-term support branch. And so... Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, if you want to go play with the new stuff, you can. But hey, it, it's safe to target everything on this because we're going to continue to support it. That's the type of, um, you know, good feels that you need to give people. And they did. Indeed. Yeah, and uh, I did two control Fs on this one, uh, one for Linux and one for Vulkan, and they both ended up on the exact same segments. <laughs> one for uh, was for OpenXR, and the other one was for the new CPU light mapper. The mixed reality stuff i still don't get it's it. good okay it's good to have the engine support for it because you never know what people are going to use your engine for mm -hmm. so just give, give people the options we're going to bring back vrml man go to mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> indeed uh I, although maybe, speaking speaking of browser tech maybe you want to get started in some browser game engine development and you don't know really where to start try kytrum kytrum Cromden, that's what I'm going to call Gary. it. Uh, it. It's an open source engine created to aid those who are interested in entering the game development realm. Uh, yeah, it's done in a clean, concise way. It's all based on web tech, so it's uh, real easy to um, real easy to get into. And yeah, this this stuff like this is fantastic. Uh, practical examples like this are so useful to new game devs, especially those who are looking into um, engine stuff, because it gives you a starting point. It gives you something you can iterate on and start making changes and improving and tweaking and breaking. Um, so uh, it's good that this project exists. They do have a wish list of features, though, uh, online PvP being one of them. They do have a browser version you can open up. Um, and yeah, I'm you just kind of wander around and click on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't go inside. Uh, ah, yeah. no, that's real time right there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Octocat. I couldn't find anybody like uh, playing, but I mean, it is. You can log in and multiple people. I mean, you can play it online with uh, just me. And that's just the little framework uh, demonstration that they created because, yeah, like, like Jordan said, it is an engine if you want to create. An MMO that literally everyone can play because everyone has a browser that can render HTML5 you can't at this diagonally. point. This is bullshit. This game's dead to my dead. Oh no! So yeah, if and, you uh, want to even introduce uh, uh, eight directions uh, of movement, you can probably if you yeah. have well your programming you, you, you chops gotta, about you. <laughs> yeah, you got to change the engine. But I mean, th that's what I'm saying. Though is like, how would you go about doing that? That's a fun little challenge you can implement with this engine. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, this is a good stuff. not just a framework. This is a functional framework, which is yes, yeah, which is something that you can roll out, add to. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's made with that. Now, you may remember if you watched the show last week, or maybe you've paid good money to try to forget. Pedro found some Sorry. old ass game. <laughs> yeah, uh, Power Slide. It's one of my favorite games. In fact, there's a lot of games from 1998 that uh, I very much enjoyed. How old were you in 1998, Pedro Mateus? I was 12. 11, 12, depending on which side of the year you uh, want to look at. Which but side yeah. of the year? Yes. First side or the second side? Shut up. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> the, yeah, no. Year last side. Week, uh, I put that in the show notes because I very much like uh, Power Slide and I've been looking for a way to play it properly on Linux because the Proton version is a little bit uh, busted. And I found a Power Slide remake and I thought that everything was great until I got to a couple of the latter game tracks that just wouldn't load and it, they would freeze. The game would freeze during the loading screen and then it would just sec fault. So I went to their bit bucket, reported the issue two days later, fix release. Version 121 is out, uh, and yeah, the two tracks, Mind Shafted and Utopia, if you're using the <laughs> GOG assets, or the um, the Steam version, which is just a repack of the GOG version for Steam, uh, that is now fixed. You can play the game just by getting the data files from either of those versions. So big thanks to Dimitri uh, Polubokto. Uh, the lead developer it's, a, it's fixed two days so that's amazing thank you <laughs> so this game has multiplayer right it does um, uh, you need java to run the server though 
<laughs> I'm not going to be the one running the server, Java boy. Um, <laughs> I'm Java boy. Pedro is. But I may Python very pal. well also buy a Venom Jordan a copy of Power Slide to um, force Inflict. them to play for the chairs. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what it's going to say. How much, do, how much is the uh, art assets going to cost? Uh, Five dollars, I think. Five bucks. That's not too bad. No. Yeah. I enjoy you buying them for us. Yes. <laughs> Again, next week when I have money, because right now I don't. <laughs> Man, having money must be nice. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. <laughs> Coming up next, we're throwing chairs at Guildmaster Gratuitous Subtitle. I really wish it had a gratuitous subtitle, but they just called it that. Sad face. All right. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. <laughs> this week, we're taking a look at Guildmaster Gratuitous Subtitles, done by Jim Makes Games on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about 14 bucks US. What is it? Gratuitous, or Guildmaster Gratuitous Subtitle <laughs> is an irreverent, irreverent fantasy adventure juxtaposing humorous dialogue with challenging tactical combat in a world of elemental magic and sneaky goblins. That's a little racist, and the game calls it out as being racist right at the beginning, before completely sidestepping it and encouraging you to just murder these goblins indiscriminately. Anyways! The G good old Jim, he sent us some keys via thanks, Curator Jim. Correct or Connect. So thanks, uh, Jim. Let's get into it. Pedro, what did you think about Guildmaster Gratuita Subtitle? I honestly didn't hate it, but uh, before we get to that, I it launched in full screen and went to a 720p window over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080. I think that's a first, honestly. <laughs> the um, frame rate was capped at 60 rather than being V-synced, which is what I expect from Unity engines. There's a bug uh, with the tutorial messages not going away even if you click on them, which meant that I couldn't start the first quest the very first time I started the game, but restarting the game without the tutorial enable uh bypass that so th that was a bit of a cock up the arrow keys and was are the only uh, keyboard controls that you get and so i can't really get a chair for that but i would have liked other keyboard shortcuts now that's a bit subjective so let's get into the subjective bit i wasn't you know, expecting to have my mind blown or anything, but many of the guild master's quips got a solid chuckle out of me. Probably not saying much considering it's me and I'm easily amused. Still, there are a lot of puns uh, and callback jokes to previous lines uh, that the guild master delivered. And yeah, no, the punnery is very much what you're here for. Uh, the rest of the game is a fairly standard turn based RPG. Not a JRPG, no, 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 not like that. More along the lines of Temple of Elemental Evil or Shadowrun or even XCOM. And don't get me wrong, I like those games. I like Guildmaster too. But the key differentiator here is the humor, and I'll be a naked monkey's uncle if it doesn't deliver. Digging in a chair for the technical cock-ups though, so three chairs. <laughs> Yeah, on uh, Fedora 32 64-bit with the, S, uh, not the S, R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, tiny 720p window out of the box with tiny, tiny text. You got to turn on font scaling because <laughs> it's not on by default. Guys, please, people have larger than 720p monitors. Please make your game text readable. Um, but yeah, uh, they're little pixely men and they're little pixely world. It reminds me a lot of the aesthetic from like, uh, SSI gold box games like Hillsfar or Pool of Radiance or something like that. Uh, the overworld stuff, at least not the first person. Um, control wise, yeah, you control by clicking. So click away. I didn't really hear much of a soundtrack. I'm sure there was one, but completely blanked out. Oh, yeah, there was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun wise, it's it's not bad. I mean, gameplay wise, it's a pretty simple tactics RPG. You got your HP, dodge and mana bar that is carried on by your characters and their attacks and damage are determined by the weapons that they utilize. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Final Fantasy Tactics, but a lot more equipment focused. Some folks are dual classed and you can double fist items, but when you get them seems to be at the whim of the game. The tactical combat itself, it's not its not bad. It's your standard four dudes against many. You gotta use your train and action economy to make sure that your dudes aren't totally overwhelmed. The AI is pretty dumb. They will just come to you, but if you leave any gaps in your formation, Dear Lord, it's vicious. It will take advantage of it and just gang up on one or two of your guys. And then you're like, oh, my precious action economy. Now I have no chance of winning. Um, I feel the player units are uh, kind of the weak point here. Uh, there's a lot of customization to be had in terms of the weapon layouts. Um, but I don't know. I, I'd like a little bit more depth to the characters. I guess it sort of holds true to the sort of gold box SSI thing. But 
I don't know that I I like those games for sort of the the experience and sort of like the meta narrative that you inject less so this sort of setup right here. Um, the Guildmaster powers, uh, they kind of seem like a bit of an afterthoughts because your choices are basically doing an attack's worth of damage, heal a basic spells amount or cast a buff that lasts three turns every three turns. And the, it has to remind you to use it because sometimes you'll just forget um, because honestly, they'll help a little bit. Like sometimes the heal will come in clutch, but it's not enough to actually like make it really turn the tide. Um, the writing, which is kind of what the game sells itself on. It's, it's all right. Uh, the jokes get a little too fourth wall breaky, especially when like they're going into like tirades about Star Trek, <laughs> but they can't talk about Star Trek cause it's copyright infringement. <laughs> As, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel you got to pick a tone and stick with it. Uh, if you're going to go fourth wall breaky, go full fourth wall breaky or just one or two. This seemed a little bit lopsided. I'll give it three chairs. It's a solid game. It's definitely a solid tactical RPG. Um, and you know, it's cheap enough, so not inoffensive. Good stuff. Ben. Over here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls on Debian 11 ish. We're almost there, kids. Uh, Threadripper 1920X, NVIDIA 2060 and 32 gigajoules RAM. It's pretty decent. Uh, didn't have any big issues with it whatsoever. Uh, it launched full screen over here. So I'm like, all right, that's neat. Everything worked out of the box. The only hum moment I had while playing this was it being limited to 1080p. I was like, well, this is decidedly retro. I guess maybe that's a feature. I did like the Zoom UI feature. Like all the dead space that you have, it just gets rid of it. It just maximizes everything. And um, the graphics, they're legit. I mean, they're hipster pixel graphics with a screaming MIDI-inspired soundtrack. It was bumping into the red on my meters. I do mean screaming. Now, the only bug I ran loud, into... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only bug I ran into is, like, right at the start, uh, my first little dungeon, uh, one of my guys, he, like, hung a right, started walking animation. That, that was his life then. That's all he was going to fucking do. UI went unresponsive. Couldn't do fuck all. I had to four my way out. So, yeah, the game kind of fucked off right there. I had to restore from the autosave. Not a big deal again. It was kind of right after the tutorial. And uh, it doesn't capture the mouse cursor. So have fun with that navigation when you go screeching off to the left or right or up or down. But let's talk about the fun. Because, you know, hey, Jordan, I thought I had a really good sense of humor. I liked it for what it is. Then again, I wasn't rating it on anything else. I saw the sense of humor. I'm like, hey, something I don't immediately dislike. Cool. Work went into the writing. It wasn't, I mean, maybe all the jokes didn't land, but at least it was making an effort. And um, it does start off very interesting where your four characters come together. I mean, really, your three characters got to come together. And uh, one of the baddies show up and it just turns out that he's not really a baddie. He just showed up and got, uh, let's kill him. That (laughs) kind of sets an interesting tone for the game. Now, more of the same. If you're like me, This is not your thing, but you picked a party, you smash that auto equip button because you don't have two hours to juggle stats and 17 clicks later, you get through a fucking door, any door. That's how many clicks it takes to get through a door in these games. Now, all I can say to that is welcome to the exciting world of tactical RPGs. I mean, this one's kind of playing by the book on this. Now, credit where credit's due. Gratuitous subtitle. It looks, it sounds, it plays the part. No. As far as a modern reimagining of what this genre was back in the day for the nostalgia feels, it's got it. It's got it down. They nailed that. You know, you're thinking like Sierra level type stuff. Um, yeah. Now, that enchantment, all that fun stuff, it's got it. But fuck all if I don't find this entire genre I'm just boring, man. I can't get into it. I've tried so many times. I always look at something like this, like, will this be the game? Nothing against the game, you know? Again, I think it's well done, but you, you if you've never found 17 clicks to get through a door, enthralling, this is not going to be the game that changes your mind, nor did it mine. I'm going to say, uh, you know, technical, functioning, it's great. Didn't have a big problem with it. No showstoppers, but for the genre itself, uh, fuck doors. Two chairs. <laughs> Hashtag fuck doors. Dude, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, how I mean, do you like? I mean, go over it again because I genuinely look at stuff like this. Now, I understand if you're watching the video version, 
not terribly impressive, but when I say a Sierra's type, you know, tactical RPG, this is what comes to, this is in your brain mates, right? Something like mm, that. Yeah. Uh, looks like, like, like I said, every, it, it reminds me a lot of like uh, Hillsfar or just the, the Overland for like old SSI games. Mm. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's pretty grid based. Sometimes they'll throw you a curveball like in this level right here where it's a bit isometric, but it's still the same type of shit. Um, it's all grids, all squares all the way down. Um, yep. I, I there are I, better, like, I, there are better examples of, uh, turn-based RPG style of combat. Uh, I mentioned Temple of Elemental Evil. That one sticks out in my mind because it was that good. Uh, but yeah, it, the, the gameplay here is clearly secondary. They, they were just looking for a medium to deliver the puns and the jokes and they decided a video game was the way to do it. So mm-hmm. kudos. All right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, thirteen ninety nine. I mean, if you want the uh, want a little humor with some nostalgia feels, this might be able to deliver it. Yeah, if you and if you like uh, challenging tactical stuff, that's challenging enough. So coming up next, we got some hate mail. So much hate mail. And wouldn't you know it? It's it's been a big episode, but uh, we are finally uh, on the end stretch. It's uh, it's good to finally be done. But don't worry. We do have some hate mail for you this evening. So if you'd like to contribute, I just your had a own panic hate attack. Mail. I was like, shit, did I load the hate Yeah, I did. All right. <laughs> if you'd like to I, contribute, I had a bit of a panic your attack, too. <laughs> or your general. panic attacks, Look at you that can share those, right too. too. Ah, just you. go to linuxgamecast.com and hit the contact button. Uh, there's a little form you got to fill. If you are a developer and you'd like us to have a look at your game, make sure you include three keys or, you know, just read the thing that it says on the top of the contact page. There's like, how do you do that? Is six it pink? lines. P-A-N-K? I don't remember. Oh. Pank, pank. Pank. oh, no, it was pink. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, oh, very oh, easy no, to do. Pank. Just make sure you pick uh, LGC Weekly. It's just so we do get to read your hate mail. Otherwise, we may be misinclined to interpret it as some feedback. Constructive inclined, de inclined, re inclined. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about what Eshep sent over the wire, man. He's talking about Elocom stuff. Elocom, a name I know. He's like, yo, check a this out. A name you can trust? I didn't say that much. <laughs> <laughs> Does your relationship with your computer peripherals always make you want to send them back and try Elecom? No, seriously, though. I've been buying Elecom shit and, uh, in Japan for quite... See, I thought about... See, I edited this because I was going to put it on Wednesday. And I'm like, nope, this is for Saturday. Uh, years, no problems with them. Uh, they've worked zero fucking hassle. If you're ever looking for a Link Linux compatible hardware and Elecom's a choice, it's a damn good bet. You won't have problems with drivers for it. This is true. Hopefully one of these days I'll not be busy during the live show so I can join in on the shit shooting madness. That is y'all's trademark train wreck. Cheers, Eshep. Mm-mm-mm. Eshep's an OG, uh, man. He's been around for a while. Yeah. I haven't yes. heard from him in a bit. Well, I mean, you know, the big time difference between here and Japan. <laughs> I suppose yeah. that is true. <laughs> I will say, like, Elecom, um, I'm very familiar with the brand, and, like, the most random piece of hardware I have is a 4x3 capacitive touchscreen. It's, like, 15 inches from Elecom, because it was given to me, I was like, do you want this? And it's flat panel, too. I'm like, I'll fuck with it, why not? And... You know, did the internet research, and this thing's old, man. This thing's like 10 years old. And yeah, they just have Linux drivers. It's like, yeah, just plug it in with the USB and all this. And like, oh, shit, it works. Put Google Earth on it, spun that globe one time, never fucking cut it on since. <laughs> I had a look at their lineup to see what they were selling. Uh, the left-handed mouse-like uh, trackball. Looks all right, but uh, I like, okay, so what kind of gaming peripherals are you selling? Oh, they have the fake SNES type controller that you just plug into USB. All right. Do you know another? <laughs> if I'm ever looking for one of them. <laughs> this is also Helicom. No. Yeah. Right. This is the huge. <laughs> but then again, who was that? That was someone upstairs. Oh, someone so it was. Fell. Okay. I, I no, I. <laughs> I genuinely asked that so I knew who's track to mark. I wasn't like placing blame. I, I think so, I think someone ate shit upstairs. Nice. Um, the one downside, if you're not fluent in Japanese, 
because especially like with this huge, you can get them imported and you can get them on Amazon, but there is no English anywhere on anything. So it's not like multilingual. So just keep that in mind. All right. One All right, last. Up next. Uh, we, we talked about a game like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> every, every so often we, when we review games, the developers get back to us. Uh, this one's from Twitter, uh, links to that in our show notes uh, from Daisy games. And they say, just heard at Ben Stone's hack red review quote. It's not April 1st anymore. You can take the soundtrack down for sale now. Uh, I'm dying. Tear you drop motherfucker. I hate all of you. Go to, I, you're <laughs> stupid. You're destroying <laughs> Linux. Yes. Uh, he's dying. Thanks for the honesty and rating three chairs out of five, I guess. Shh. Fifth chair is only legend. You speak of that in the no, same no, breath no. as Mega Ultra Chicken. No, no, you will that's, die. That's just fine. Everyone's going to let that get. Oh. No. Here Scott and uh, Matthew, thank you very much, both of you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> basically, going like, in and saying, no, the max score is four shares and Matthew with the, the max score. <laughs> the math. I guess that's why they're. Uh, that's why he's called Matthew. Uh, the <laughs> he should be called Matthew. Like yeah, it's basically impossible to get four shares, so three shares is pretty uh, much uh, the best you can get. GG. Secret, secret of the magic crystal. <laughs> Mac four chair uh, game. It's perfect. Mac and crystal, you would baby, like a word with you. <laughs> you want some Mac and crystal? Mac and cheese, yeah. Yeah, in Arizona, baby. We can get some Mac and crystal. Oh, yeah, man. no, the, basically, Hack Grid was good, but it wasn't, you know, Baba is you level good. It the, was good. The, 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 I, 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 for, for, for a dollar puzzle for, game, yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. what I was saying. And yes, I, I had to give you some absolute shit because of what I could only describe as like um, MIDI jazz ish something <laughs> where clearly like no fucks were given. Then you fucked off on top of that. And I'm like, OK, which I, I'm fine with. I didn't even I was like, oh, right. Wait, you're selling that as a soundtrack. And I just made a joke about it. <laughs> and. He Daisy, took it on the chin. <laughs> Daisy Games having the ability to not be a humorless cunt. <laughs> Looked at that. What? Uh, that's funny. I was like, yeah, I was trying to make a joke. I'm glad you laughed at it. I, seriously, you did, and that's cool. You made a neat game, and it's incredibly cheap, and everyone should go pick it up because it will fuck with your brain a little bit. Yep. Indeed. Cool. You, I, you, you thought you were smart. Just play a puzzle game and oh, you'll dude. <laughs> this It'll is true. prove you wrong real quick. <laughs> On that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to balance the hell out of here because it's late. But hey, if you want to get hold of me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. That's where I'm at. I'm doing the things that people do on Twitter. I probably will not argue with you, but I will reply if you're going to be sending a small novella of questions, hints, allegations, thoughts. Things better left unsaid. Use our fuck mothering contact form or just at me in our Discord or IRC. We get those too. I am so smart. SMR at the Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool for more me. I had all of a sudden I want some really clever ASMR. But hey, if you'd like to maybe point me in the right direction, you can go to at and accounted for on Twitter. That that that's the best place you can uh, get in touch with me, I guess. That oh man, great. could you imagine like a- <laughs> ASMR physics lectures or some shit like that? No. For uh, yes, that's, that's kind of what I want. <laughs> Don't wish it into being. <laughs> <laughs> Sarsaparilla. Mm-mm, delicious. Well, it's that time of the night again where we got to thank all the people for making this possible. All the lovely humans who give us money and well, support. Well, keep thinking like, they're going to keep showing up. Damn it, woman. You gave Madonna. <laughs> I gave I gave three, You gave Madonna. Well, we got to thank our, our advisor, Omegas, our executive producers, Aldeus, Barb Brampt, Mr. Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Mr. Theron, Mr. Atomic Ass, Mr. G, Mr. T, and Drummer, and our lone little Nicky fan, Darkwing. I also, can someone please shoot empty as Mr. T? I want to see that. I heard shoot empty and something about Mr. T. I'm like, damn, man. I, I want Mr. T to shoot empty in the head. And all the 350 uh, champions is uh, Jack B, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Frostclaw, and Kyle Linux. And of course, the uh, Death Notes, Nova K, this will be Chat P, Romeo, Marson K. System T, Craig, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen Jill, and Benjamin. 
I'm, I'm struggling. I'm squinting. Like. Hey, we got to think Lutris, and we got to think Lutris, because that's there twice, and I mentioned it twice, so fuck off. Um, but did you remember to mention Lutris? No. I totally forgot to mention Lutris. And Ace. Like Bill Rick and the mentor. You use play on Linux. You're all insane. Thank you. You Thank use you so play much. on Linux. <laughs> Jython, baby. Jython. Smile. <laughs> five dudes.